my very cool campsite. I'm at Full Hollow Lake State Park in Sholo, Arizona. I have full hookups and it's nice and shady, but that's okay because we are plugged into electricity. I have a grill and a fire pit and a picnic table and a very neatly manicured campsite. And there are tons of trails to walk on around here. There's one right down there, just past the bathrooms that goes around the lake. So, me and Piglet are gonna head down that way. You ready, Piglet? You ready to go for a walk? Yeah? Okay. Don't run into the store lake. <laughs> See you at the lake. Full Hollow Lake in Arizona got its name from Thomas Jefferson Adair, a settler who moved into the area in 1885 to farm the Rocky Canyon. Locals joked that only a fool would try to farm the land, and the name stuck. The small town of Adair that Adair established has since been covered by the lake. The state park has several days areas and seven campgrounds. Four of the campgrounds have facilities such as sewer and water and electric. Some only have electric and water. Three of the campgrounds are for tents only, so you cannot park a trailer or a pop-up or a van. <laughs> and I guess you could if you were sleeping in a tent. So, uh, the prices for the electric and water are $33 a night, and the full hookups are $35 a night. But it's hard to get reservations. Uh, I ended up having to make three separate reservations in order to stay the six days that I was there. Uh, two nights in the first campsite, two nights in the second campsite, and one night in the third campsite. Well, that's five nights. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be aware that some sites are shared. Our second site we had to share with a fifth wheel. The restrooms at this state park are very nice. Flush toilets. And each stall has its own shelf, and you've got a timer here that you can turn on to turn on the lights. And of course, be sure to lock the door so nobody walks in on you. climb back up those stairs. Well, we're here in our last campsite at Full Hollow Lake State Park. Um, this is probably the nicest of the campsites that we stayed here. Um, 
except there's no sewer connection, which is a problem because I have a leak in my gray tank. So I've got a, a little bucket hanging down here or shoved underneath, hopefully to catch the leak, but it's not quite working completely as I had planned, but we're going to be heading out in a little bit and we'll go dump the tanks and then I'll be at an RV park for a couple of weeks so I can connect to the sewer so it won't be an issue. But I do uh, have reservations or an appointment to uh, take the, the van into the RV shop to get the rest of the generator maintenance completed, fix the gray tank leak, and uh, it rained the other night and I discovered that I have a leak in my Max Air fan. <laughs> Probably the seals need to be uh, redone. Or, I don't know, it could, could be an issue with the lid not shutting completely. But I thought before I leave here, I'm going to walk down to the little uh, outdoor area. I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it in somewhere around in here uh, what the actual name of it is where it's a little got a little a little store in there you can buy some souvenirs and uh, ice cream sodas candy chips things like that and they have a little bit of fishing gear in there too but I'll show you that so we're gonna actually I'm gonna cut it cut through here because my driveway is pretty long <laughs> I better lock this man I think this is probably my favorite state park that I have camped at across Arizona and New Mexico it's just really quiet and peaceful here. And the campsites are pretty far apart, so you have a lot of privacy. Except in that last one that I was in, where I had to share a spot with somebody. Good morning! like somebody's headed to the lake with their canoes. Okay, it's called J&T's Wildlife Outdoors. And they have a little shop in here. Their business hours. And over here we have the boat rental prices. So you can do hourly or half day. And they got canoes, double kayaks, single kayaks, stand up paddleboard, and gas powered fishing boats. So unfortunately, I did not do any of this stuff because I still haven't been feeling well. But I'll come back one day and do it. Okay, so we're in the little, um, what do you call this, a camp store? Mm -hmm. So they have um, little souvenirs and cute things that have to do with camping. Stuff for the kids. Ice cream, that's not just for the kids. They have sodas, water, candy. There's a little microwave here. Coffee. Chips. They even have a package of s'mores. I guess it comes with all the stuff to make s'mores. You got towels. 
little uh, incidentals that you might need that you might have forgotten. And uh, more little souvenirs. And we have some fishing gear. And stickers. I have to come back and get a sticker. So I didn't bring any money with me. I don't know where they keep the boats. There they are. All kinds of canoes and kayaks and paddle boards. That looks very fun. And I'm kind of wondering where the little town of Adair is exactly, because it's like, it's kind of big. It wraps around over to the left, and that wraps around over to the right. I don't know if there's any way to find that out. But I can see that it's very rocky, so yeah, farming doesn't look easy there. And we have the people that were, uh, that had the canoes in the back of their truck are unloading here. So they're gonna have fun today. Okay, this hiking trail starts here and it goes all the way around to the uh, first campground the, that we stayed in, the Redhead Loop. And the trail continues all the way around the lake to the other side where the, uh, the large day use area is. So that's a very nice camp, uh, state park and the campgrounds are immaculate. So I highly recommend this place. We are all packed up and getting ready to leave the Wolves Hollow. State Park. And we're heading over to the Encore Barbie Resort. Well, it's not really a resort. Barbie Park. Um, just like a mile off the road. Might be too early to check in. It's 11 to 28. But we're going to go get a shot. And we'll have full hookups for 13 nights. And then I have to figure out where we're going to go next. Because I have no clue, but it'll be fun to figure it out. Okay, I'll show you some of the video on the way out of the park. Ready to go, okay, Blake? Let's go. We're going to a little bit. Not too bad. All of the campgrounds here, there are one, two, three, four, five, four, four or five campgrounds that allow RVs, and then there's three campgrounds that are tent only. Uh, I'll put a map up that you can show it to you. And not all of the spots have sewer, but I think all of the RV spots have water and electric. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. So the last two spots I was in did not have sewer. The first spot did. And it was $35 a night for the sewer and $33 a night for the spots with uh, just electric. I was going to dump my gray tank but at the uh, dump station here, but I think I'll just do it when I get to the RV park since I will have sewer there. It just amazes me how well kept this state park is. Here's the path that started down there by the little camp store that I showed you. 
And our paperwork was there, so we checked into our site. We're going to leave you there. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.